future of gaming is brought to you by the Samsung Galaxy S3. From wearable computers to virtual reality headsets, brain-powered, tongue-powered, and everything sci-fi in between, the future of gaming is happening now. And IGN is here to take a closer look at the groundbreaking technologies that will influence the way you play video games in the near future. Join us for the debut episode of this IGN original series as we bring you up to speed on emerging trends in the world of video games. Then, later, IGN takes a closer look at Leap, the upcoming revolutionary 3D motion control system. Could Leap's technology finally be the answer to our science fiction fantasies? Find out next on IGN's Future of Gaming. A quick look at the top grossing mobile games forecasts a surprising trend. A vast majority of games are free to play, but developers are cashing in on in-app purchases. Could console and PC games be far behind? Premium gaming is just becoming a more and more important part of the video game industry. Now we have everybody from Valve with Team Fortress 2 to Tribes Ascend to, you know, three games every week being announced that are all free to play. Like, to me, the idea of a game not being free to play as a multiplayer game on PC is crazy. Over the next few years, we'll probably see free to play get even bigger than it is today. At this point, most PC games that we see announced are free to play, and it's kind of a surprise when we see something that's PC exclusive that is not free to play. Then you have something like the Ouya as well, where you know it's a whole console based around the idea that every game has to have some sort of free to play component. The other consoles just can't do that right now, and there's obviously a huge audience for it. There's not a lot of freemium on consoles right now, and I definitely think that's going to change. I think the next Xbox and the next PlayStation are going to have to offer people free gaming options. How do you secure the future of a game's longevity? Simple, you let your players mod them. Whether you're a AAA publisher or an indie house, giving fans the ability to change the mechanics, environment, or even objectives in a game allows it to evolve into something else, perhaps a whole new game altogether. User-generated content is another thing that's not gonna do anything but become a bigger and bigger part of the video game industry. Modding has been a part of PC gaming for decades. Uh, it's gone back, I mean, the original Doom, you, you still got mods for that. Uh, all the way up to, you know, you look at Skyrim and Minecraft today, which are hotbeds of, of uh, modding. DayZ is a great example of, of a mod just exploding in popularity and taking something from relative obscurity, which was Arma 2, and uh, turning that into something that, that just draw, has drawn in over a million gamers so far. And for some reason, people, even people who normally would hate a game as punishing as that, they take it and they love it. And I think it's just that, you know, they feel like they're a part of something that's really cool. They feel like, it's almost like knowing about the cool indie band before anyone else does. I kind of equate the success that DayZ has had as kind of, kind of like winning the lottery. That has happened several times over, over the history of PC gaming. Uh, things like Counter-Strike. But the great thing about it being a lottery is that anybody can buy a ticket. Put your idea out there and it might explode and, and just be wildly successful. We have a generation of kids that have grown up with uh, you know, PC games and games being cool, so now they want to mod, and now these people are, you know, they want to be game designers, and what's the best way to be a game designer? Make an incredible mod that shows that you have like true game design talent. There's no reason why we won't see a lot more games like this just arise out of the, the gaming community. Now the developers have seen how easy it is to get players in and creating uh, mods and creating new content for them. Developers can just take their hands off the wheel, basically. That is totally the future of, of game development. Love them or hate them, motion control technologies are still trending in the video game world. No matter how nerdy we look, wagging around our controllers, wiggling our fannies, or tilting our tablets, game publishers are determined to make sure this fad never dies. Not surprisingly, we've come a long way since the birth of the revolutionary Nintendo Wii and PlayStation Move. Likely inspired by the surge of smartphones and tablets, Nintendo's upcoming console, the Wii U, showcases a new touchscreen controller in the form of the gamepad. Microsoft's first offering into the motion tracking realm, Kinect, proved that gamers don't need a controller at all. And with the Xbox 720 on the horizon, rumors of a much improved Kinect 2 experience are also stirring. 
But not all emerging motion control systems even have gaming at the forefront of their purpose. One innovative company has found a way for users to control computers using natural hand gestures, in a way we could only imagine exists in movies. But is it too early in the game to ditch our mice and keyboards? The Leap is a small iPod-sized motion tracking peripheral that is 200 times more sensitive than existing touch-free technologies. Using a patented mathematical approach to sensing 3D space, there's nothing on the market like it. As stated on Leap's own website, it's like being able to reach into the computer and pull out information as easily as reaching into a cookie jar. So not many people know what the Leap is, and I guess the best way to describe it is it's kind of like a Kinect for your fingers. So when you think of the Kinect, you kind of think of all the crazy things it can do. It recognizes your voice, it recognizes your face, it recognizes all your body movements. And what the Leap did is it distilled all these features into one thing that it does extremely well. And that's that it can pinpoint where your fingers are, or where whatever you're holding is, and accurately represent it on a screen on your desktop. So we've all seen this sort of technology in movies before where people are doing incredible things on their computers but without a keyboard and without a mouse and up until now this has been science fiction. Uh, but what we're seeing with this thing is that this technology exists right now and that we might not be that far off from the science fiction future that we've all sort of been dreaming about since we saw Minority Report. If this works how it's supposed to, it could be absolutely revolutionary. This could be a new way to input into your computer, and they have really smart people working on it. Um, they have patented algorithms and 300,000 lines of code or something ridiculous like that. I just call it mathematical. So who knows, with the pinpoint accuracy, this could be the first motion control system that hardcore gamers actually get excited about. Leap is definitely on its way to transforming the way gamers interact with computers, but not without competition. Tune into the next episode to see what other forward-thinking technologies have cropped up on IGN.com.